Well, let's just worship the Lord together. Hallelujah. Let's lift our voice to him together all across this building. I love you, Jesus. I worship you, Jesus. I wish somebody would just shout unto the Lord for just a moment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, let's really give him praise together right now. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. If God's been good to you. Would you give him some praise right now? Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you glory and honor today. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. So glad to be with you in service here this morning. And um, I feel the presence of the Lord in this place. And I give honor to your pastor and his dear wife and their family. And I uh, thank him for the, the invitation to be here. And uh, normally I, do, I don't come alone. I normally travel with my family. Today I am by myself and my wife is with her family today and uh, enjoying being with them. I find that when most people like me better when I'm with my wife and daughter, but if you can tolerate me today alone, I just have come with great expectation that the Lord is about to move in a powerful way. <laughs> Hallelujah. I didn't drive three hours to play around today. God's wanting to do a special work in this house. Amen. Praise God. I want us to reach out to the Lord right now and just, if you know how to pray in the Holy Ghost, I think we need to do that right now. Let's push this a little bit deeper here this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. So thankful to be here. And um, I believe before we turn the lights out tonight that miracles are going to have happened in this place. If you're here and you need the Holy Ghost, you can receive it while I'm preaching. You can start talking in tongues. You don't have to wait until the end of the service. You can get it right now. The Bible says the Holy Ghost fell on them while he yet spake the word. Hallelujah. You need a healing. You can be healed if you need deliverance, victory. Whatever you need from the Lord, you ought to just make up your mind right now. I'm not leaving without an answer, without victory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey Amen. I wouldn't waste my time going to church if I didn't expect something to happen. Hallelujah. I feel expectation in this house here this morning. I want to turn your attention to the word of the Lord. How many would help me preach this morning? Amen. I know we're unfamiliar. I get all of that. But the Holy Ghost wants to work. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse number 13. And um, I just ask that you not jump to conclusions with this verse. Let me preach what I feel. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse number 13. Bible says, there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that you may be able to bear it. Praise God. Amen. With the help of the Lord, I'm going to preach to you from this subject today, God's escape plan from trouble. 
God's escape plan from trouble. Would you lay your Bibles down, lift a hand right where you are. Let's pray. If you need anything from the Lord, I would lift your voice. If you've come desperate, you've come searching, why don't you begin to talk to him right now? In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I bind every demonic spirit of hell that would oppose your will in this service. In Jesus' name, I loose the gift of faith to operate among your people now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we're believing, we're expecting you to work, to minister, to move, to heal, to fill. In the name of Jesus, if you're expecting God to work, would you shout with a voice of triumph one more time, hallelujah. Oh, somebody give him praise today. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you glory. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. You can be seated. Paul, writing to the Corinthian church, says, There hath no temptation taken you, except that which is common to man. Now, I'm not here necessarily to deal with temptation. To understand the full meaning of this verse, Paul was not just referring to temptation for sin, but the word temptation translates as adversity, trial, affliction, trouble, problems, you name it. So I've come to preach to some people here this morning with problems. Okay. Two people here have a problem here today. Why don't you turn to your neighbor and just tell them you've got a problem. Amen. I, I've come to preach to real people today, not plastic Pentecostals. God wants to help some folks here in this house before we're done. I found out a long time ago, the only way you're ever getting anything from God is you've got to become honest and become real. The only way you talked in tongues the first time was you had to get honest with God about where you were and what you weren't. And if you need a miracle here today, if you need an answer to prayer, somebody's going to have to get transparent and say, God, I've got a problem and you're the only one that can solve it. Well, hallelujah. Paul said, no problem, no pressure, no trial, no torment, no issue, no crisis has come into your life except the kind that is common, that is ordinary, that is everyday, that everybody is dealing with to some degree. I've come to preach to people today that have problems in the home and problems in the marriage. I've come to preach to some people that have spirits of hell such as anxiety and depression. I have felt suicide in this room since I walked in here today. I've come to help pull somebody out of hell today. I've come to preach the devil off of somebody here in this service. Come on. Hallelujah. Praise God. I've come to preach to some people that are having a crisis in your health. I've come to preach to some people that have hit a wall spiritually and can seem to go no further, that don't know how to get victory, that don't know how to get free from the things that are tormenting you. I've come to preach to some people that are struggling with things that are unspeakable, that not one person in this room has any idea about. God sent me here to preach to you. Come on, it's not the will of God for you to founder in that place any longer. It's not the will of God for you to remain trapped, for you to remain stuck. Come on, God wants to lift somebody out of despair. God wants to lift somebody up out of trouble today. Come on, the Lord's here to help somebody. Come on, I feel ministering spirits in this house right now. God is here to relieve the pressure. God is here to pick somebody up. Hallelujah. Praise God. Paul said, you're not facing anything except that which is common. Kandakasha. Praise God. Anybody in here need a healing in your body this morning? You lift a hand if you need a healing in your body. 
Hallelujah. I'm not going to have you raise a hand if you have a spiritual need, but there are many needs represented in this service. How many believe that God's able? That's easy. How many of you believe that God is willing and would do it this morning? He'll do it on a Sunday morning today. If you believe this is your day for a breakthrough, Well, hallelujah. Praise God. Everybody in this room has a struggle of some kind, a problem, an issue. I'm going to tell you, you'll never live for God long enough that life will become so smooth and so easy that there is no pressure, that there is no need, that there is no trouble. Don't you believe the lie of the denominal religious world of a TV preacher that says living for God is easy and all your problems disappear, honey? Problems don't disappear living for God. When you were living for hell, when you were living in the world, you had problems that overwhelmed you. You still got problems in the church, but now you're not fighting them by yourself. Come on, now you've got somebody to fight for you. Now you've got someone to stand in your defense. Now there is a resource. There is an outlet. There is a way of escape. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. People in the world handle their problems, handle their crisis with substance abuse. Praise God. I don't believe people get into addictions and bondage and all of these things just because it looks appealing. But it's how we cope with life. Oh, praise God. Put a chain smoker in a stressful situation and watch how quickly they reach for that pack of cigarettes. Praise God. How do you deal with the pressure of life? I've come to preach to some people under pressure. I've watched some of you throughout this service and the pressure is obvious. It is crushing some of you. Some of the situations that are mounting up in your life are about to totally consume you. I've come to preach to some marriages that are about to snap under the pressure of life. You, you can get quiet. The quieter you get, the more I know I'm walking somebody's log right now. But we cope with pressure with all kind of addictions, with alcohol, tobacco, meth, heroin, pornography, sexual encounters and shack-ups and flings and affairs and you name it. That's how we cope with stress. That's how we cope with anxiety. That's how we deal with the problems of life. You know what's interesting? After you get good liquored up, because you're sick and tired of the pressure that's on you when the drunk wears off, the problem is still there. And usually what happens when we use these types of methods to escape problems, the problems only compound and get worse. You got drunk because you're sick and tired of the pressure at work, and then you got so drunk and so violent, you beat the kids and beat the wife and ended up in the drunk tank. And now you've got more problems than you had when you got started. I'm going to tell you the methods of escape that the world has will fail every single time. Joining a church will not solve it. Being religious will not solve it, honey. There's got to be something more. Some of you tried every church in this city and you're still broken and still empty. I'm going to tell you, God's brought you into this house for a reason here this morning. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Without God, we are grasping at straws. We're reaching, trying, pleading, hoping we can find something. And everything that we find is nothing but a band-aid. It's temporary. It's a quick fix. It doesn't change. My depression gets worse. My anxiety gets worse. The anger in my heart gets worse. The violence, the suicidal thoughts, the voices in my head. Can I preach to some real people here today? Anybody come out of that kind of a world that can remember? 
He said, there's a lot of first-generation apostolics here. Where are you this morning? Anybody remember what God pulled you out of? Are you in this house today? You remember what it felt like? Honey, if God can do it for you, he can do it for somebody else. If God can pull you out, he can pull anybody out. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's get real. Apostolics, if we're not involved in all of those things, we're saved and sanctified and full of the Holy Ghost, children of the living God. But we have our own methods of escape. We have our own means of escape. We have our own substitutes that we depend on. I'm going to preach real today, but the Holy Ghost is trying to work right now. Amen. God has a method of escape, but often we resort to our own. Oh, hallelujah. Listen, I ain't here to preach against stuff. You can fill in the blanks, read between the lines if you want to, but I'm going to just preach what I feel. Amen. A lot of apostolics love to use social media as a way to prop themselves up and to cope with life. And come to preach against it. Don't throw stones at me here this morning. But this has become the outlet that we cope with life. If it's not social media, it's, it's some kind of video, it's some kind of website, it's some kind of something that provides relief from pressure. I've come to preach to people under pressure here today. It's time you get honest about the pressure. And it's time to get honest that what you've done up until this point has utterly failed and it isn't working. But God has a remedy and he has a way of escape. And he's about to show somebody the exit door. He's about to show somebody what to do. Come on. Hallelujah. Praise God stressed out, get anxious about problems, get overwhelmed, we start to scroll. And we get to read everybody's snapshot image of the life they want you to think that they have. Not here to preach against it, folks, but we have an image problem. We want people to see a certain image of our life that is not real. Oh, let's get real today, folks. Praise God. Take the snapshot of the living room after you've pushed all the dirty clothes into the corner. Move the old greasy engine out that you've been tinkering with. Blurred out all the wrinkles and the zits. Put a scripture under it. Hallelujah. And here you are with problems and all of a sudden you're, you're scrolling through and you're, my, everybody's life seems to be so perfect and so good and they got a new car and they got a new house and this guy got a raise and their life is working, they're on vacation. Here we are struggling to make ends meet. Their marriage looks like it's thriving and mine is falling apart. Their kids are in the church and mine are on the way out. But can I preach real to somebody right now? This is not your method of escape, honey. I found this has only compounded the anxiety and the depression in our lives. I've come to pray. I don't care what you believe this morning. It is not the will of God. It never has been. It never will be that you live constantly under the pressure of anxiety and depression and fear and suicide. That is a lie from the pits of hell. Stop believing that. Stop accepting that. Stop tolerating it. Stop putting up with it. Some of you have had it so long you have convinced yourself it's a reality I'm going to have to live with. This is, a, this is a flaw. This is a part of me. Mama had it. Daddy had it. Fam, this is something I'm stuck with. That's a lie. Come on. He can make all things new. We're a new creature. And come on, somebody. 
When he brought you out, he brought you all the way out. When he pulled, when he brings you out of bondage, he'll break every single shackle and chain. Come on. Don't live with stuff God didn't create you to live with. Don't put up with stuff that God has the power to save you from. Hallelujah. This is our means of escape. And it just feeds all the things that are coming against us. If it's not this, let me touch the golden cow of politics and news. You want to get depressed? You want to get angry? You want to feel anxious? Why don't you read the news cycle six or seven hours a day? Why don't you get news updates? And Let me save you the next seven days of news updates. It's hopeless. The world's falling apart. Whatever you wanted to happen isn't happening and it isn't going to happen. Honey, I've read the Bible. This world is never going to improve and no political party can improve it. It's destined to fail. But I'm not a part of this world or this kingdom. I'm a part of another kingdom. I'm a citizen of another country. I don't intend to stay around here much longer. Well, hallelujah. Politics, all this nonsense, it has, it has arisen to such a ridiculous level in the last few months. And I've watched apostolics get more political than Christian. God couldn't care less what your political registration or affiliation is. I didn't intend to deal with this a whole lot, but I'm here to deal with it right now. You're first and foremost a child of God. I can tell I'm touching a sensitive nerve right now by the resistance I feel right here in the Holy Ghost. I said you're a child of God before you're anything else. And the government, nor political party, nor political candidate can influence my future. Jesus is in control. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. We've got many outlets, many venues, many ways of trying to escape, trying to relieve ourselves from the pressure that life that hell has brought into our lives. I want to escape. I want to be free. I'm tired of the pressure. I don't have to name whatever it is that you're using to prop yourself up. I don't have to give a long, exhaustive list here today. You have felt it and sensed it as I've been preaching here today. But I'm going to tell you, God has a method and a way of escape. Paul said, no temptation has taken you except that which is common. But God is faithful. We can just stop right there and end it. God is faithful. God is consistent. God is unwavering. In him there is no shadow of turning. God is faithful even when you're not faithful. I said, God is faithful when you fail. You believe what I'm saying? God is faithful when you fall flat on your face. Can I preach real? God is faithful when you drop the ball, when you make the worst mistake of your life. God is faithful when you're on the verge of giving up. God is faithful when you've done the dumbest thing in your life. You believe what I'm saying right now? I'm not here to preach to the perfect people. I'm here to preach to somebody that says, hey, God's been faithful to me. I haven't deserved it, not one time, but he's been there every moment, every trial, every day, every hour. He's never left me. He's never forsaken me. He's never turned his back on me. Faithful. Faithful. God is faithful. We'll not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able. And here's the passage that we have twisted and distorted and stretched and massaged. He won't put more on me than I can bear. 
you need to finish the verse. Because I'm going to tell you what, there's problems in this life that will crush you to death and leave you on the side of the road dead. I said there's stuff in the world that we're living in that will suck the life out of you. There's problems some of you are dealing with right now that if God doesn't step in and if you don't allow him to work in the way he wants to work, I'm telling you right now, there's trouble that's about to erupt in your world. I'm talking to somebody right now. I don't believe he'll put more on me than I can bear. You need to finish the entirety of this thing. He said he would not put more on you above. He will not allow you to be tempted above that you're able, but you got to finish it with the temptation. will also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. That without using his method of escape, the problem will begin to crush. Without using the channel and the method that God has put in place, Honey, I'm telling you, a financial problem can crush a marriage. A health crisis can crush an individual's faith. Come on, the problem, you, you name it here today. I don't know what kind of problem that you're up against, but you know what you have wrestled with in secret. You know the battles that you have wept over in private, whatever it may be. Without the help of the Lord, it can crush you. But there is a way of escape. There is a way to escape. Hallelujah. There's a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. I'm thankful when God ends something. I'm thankful when God fixes something, when God removes something from our life. I'm thankful when God heals, and I watch him heal all the time, and I believe he's going to do that here today. I'm thankful when God redirects things and when God changes things completely, but I'm going to tell you there are many situations that you and I will find ourselves in. Some of you are in those kind right now, and sometimes God is not willing to remove us out of that situation. We, we waste all of our time wanting God to, to take everything away. Sometimes God allows things into our life to change who we are and to prepare us for where he is taking us. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, honey, there's some stuff you're going to have to walk through. I said, there's some situations you're going to have to live with for the time being, but you can make it through. There is a way to escape that you be able to bear it. Come on, God has a method that will allow you to put up with it, that will allow you to live with it for the time being. Help us, Holy Ghost. I know we're waiting for something fancy here today, waiting for some cool strategy and solution. It's pretty simple. The simplest things in God are often the things that we fall flat on our face over. The simplest things, the simplest concepts are often what cause us to stumble. God's method and way of escape to allow us to deal with the pressure of life is to get into the Spirit, to be filled and refilled with the Holy Ghost, to pray in the Spirit. I get it. You wanted something that would wow you, honey. It's that simple. But what I'm feeling right there is that's what we're reluctant to do. But that is the solution, honey. You got the Holy Ghost to do more than give you power over cigarettes. Come on, the Holy Ghost is the most powerful weapon and tool that God has ever given to mankind. It is his method and his way of escape. I want us to push right now in the Holy Ghost. Come on, wherever you are in this building, 
Come on, I wish I could get a hold of a few of you and begin to shake you right now. You've got to stir up the gift of God that is within you. Come on, right now. Come on, some of you coming here with your back against the wall. Some of you right now are so discouraged, so frustrated, so overwhelmed. You don't know what you're going to do about your husband. You don't know how the bills are going to get paid. Come on. God has a method. God has a way. Come on, there's an escape door that you may be able to bear. He knows the need in your life. He knows the prayer you've been praying. Some of you are frustrated with unanswered prayers, frustrated with unmet needs. Come on, there is a way to escape. Frustrated with backslidden kids, backslidden spouse, unsafe family. There is a way to escape. Come on, it's time to break loose in here. Huh? It's time to break loose in here. Huh? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a way to escape. Building up yourselves upon your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. There's a way out. The Lord will lift you up over your distress. Woo. Woo. Somebody get ready. This is just preparation for what's about to happen. We're just getting started. Come on, if you're tormented in your mind right now, praying in the Holy Ghost is the place the devil cannot go. You've got thoughts that keep pounding your brain out. This will never change. God will never, if God wanted to fix this, he would have fixed it a long time ago. If God cared about this, if this was the will of God to save your family, he would have put him in the church by now. Come on, thoughts that are pounding you every single day of your life. Praying in the spirit is where the adversary cannot follow you. Come on, stir it up right now. Come on, there's some folks in here. You've been a little cold in your faith, but, but as the Spirit has begun to move, some stuff has begun to thaw. Come on, some things have begun to shift. Come on, He will lift you up above that distress today. Come on, don't pray until you feel better. Pray until something begins to shift, until something begins to move. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. There is a place you can run to. There is a place you can escape to. Anahaya. Come on, don't let your problem crush you. Don't let life run you over another day. Come on, somebody, come out. Come out. Come out. Walk through that escape door. Come on, this is somebody's day of turning. Somebody's day, everything began to change. I wish somebody would do that right there and someone begin to turn loose. Stop worrying about looking pretty. Somebody lift your voice and pray in the Holy Ghost. It's changing today. It's changing today. Come on, if you don't need anything, find someone that's praying and pray with them right now. Come on, it's time everybody leaves here with victory. Everybody can leave here with victory. Somebody can leave here with a miracle right now. Somebody can leave here.
there, set free in your mind, set free in your spirit. Come on, let the Holy Ghost work right now. Come on, ma'am, God doesn't want to leave you stuck where you are. Come on, begin to cry out to him, Jesus, I need your help. I need your forgiveness. I need the Holy Ghost. Come on, he'll throw you an escape line. Come on. He'll throw you a safety line right now. Come on. If you want his help, you've got to open your mouth. Open your mouth. Let your voice out right now. He's made a way of escape, but you've got to be willing to take it right now. There's an escape door, but you've got to push it open right now. Come on, let the Holy Ghost begin to roar out of your mouth all across this room. Somebody begin to speak with other tongues. I'm coming out. I'm coming out of this today. I will not die in this situation. I will not die in this crisis. I will not remain stuck in this place. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. That's it, press. I feel something starting to break loose for people all across this house.